Hi everyone, welcome to Tiago Tuesday Talks episode 5. This one didn't take more than a year to come out. This is a video series where you ask me questions in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer some of them. No way, you designed the Turbo Track Racer, that's one of my favorite LEGO cars. I love the wings opening up, such a clever design. So to clarify, I did not design the Turbo Track Racer. That was actually Jeremy. I did the forklift alternative model though. That was one of my first design tasks when I was working for LEGO. When designing, did you ever lean against not using newer pieces or did you prefer using well-established pieces that you had more experience with? Well, the theme I was working on at LEGO was Creator 3-in-1 and usually Creator 3-in-1 isn't well known for making new elements so they usually use whatever is available on the LEGO portfolio of elements so yeah, when I was designing LEGO sets I usually used whatever was available at the time These are two questions How many people apply for a design job at LEGO? Basically, what are the chances? And you let your kids into your studio to build mess things up uh, yes, I let my kids come in here and they do mess up some things, so... But it's Lego, you know, it's a kid's toy, so it kind of makes sense to let them play around, though... When they're messing up with the <laughs> neatly sorted Lego in the sorting drawers, I tend to be a little bit nervous about that, so... Yeah. In regards to the first question, I think a few hundred people apply every time a new LEGO model designer job posting opens, I think. And from my experience, when I applied and then we got sent to the recruitment workshop in Billund, there were around close to 30 people there uh, looking to get jobs as model designers. And out of those 30-ish people, only eight got hired. But it kind of depends on how many people LEGO is looking for, which themes need new designers and, and whatnot. So it's kind of hard to like say what are the odds of getting a job at LEGO, but it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, that's for sure. As a LEGO designer, you have to work in Denmark or can you work remotely? Uh, yes, for a model designer job role, you will need to go to Denmark to, to do it, though I think things have changed a little bit and from my understanding and from talks I have with a few of my former colleagues, uh, they do work remotely nowadays from home, but they do need to go to the office every now and then, so yeah, Covid changed a little bit how things work around the world. But I think it's still a requirement that in order for you to work as a model designer, you need to work in Denmark. As a former LEGO designer, does LEGO inform you about the sets that are being designed or the sets that will eventually come in a long period of time? Well, of course! <laughs> yes, I know everything that's coming out. Yeah, they, yeah, that's a thing that LEGO does, you know. <laughs> the LEGO Technic design process are quite different from systems process inside the company? I really don't know because I didn't work for LEGO Technic, but uh, I do understand that there's a few differences, but I can't really pinpoint them. I would have to ask a, a LEGO Technic designer to, to know for sure. So maybe one day I'll have a, like, a designer interview on Tiago Tuesday Talks. That could be an interesting Tuesday talk, no? Question, how long did you work for LEGO? Three and a half amazing years. Have you ever had a missing piece while building LEGO sets? I never had missing pieces, I had some like damaged pieces that happened twice, once on a train set, another on a on the big T-Rex with the gate set, one of the slopes, the brown slopes with teeth uh, was a bit damaged so I had to ask a replacement for that. And on the T-Rex breakout set, I'm looking at it right now, I had like a, a mixed piece. It was supposed to be like a corner tile, but instead I got a Technic pin. <laughs> a Technic pin out of all of the things that could have sent me. Uh, so yeah, it happens. But it's it's very rare and I've built like hundreds of LEGO sets during my lifetime. So this is like three examples of missing things. Oh, I had a missing sticker sheet on a small set, like uh, two years ago, I think. But other than that, LEGO is usually very good with this. I think Titanic must still be your overall favorite model, but what is your all-time favorite model from a play perspective? That's an interesting one. I, I remember having this uh, base, I think it was called Rescue Base, and the theme was Rescue from like a, a, few, a few years ago. And there was this base that had like a boat, an helicopter, a base, of course, uh, and a car of sorts. So I remember having a lot of fun building and rebuilding that one and also playing with all of the different vehicles, trying to make, you know, like rescue missions for my Lego minifigures. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. 
When you get to LEGO, you can choose which theme you want to design or you are assigned to some. So for me, when I went to my recruitment workshop, part of the hiring process to, to become a LEGO designer, there were also some interviews in there. And in those interviews, they asked me which themes I would be happy to, to work for. So in a way you can kind of choose, or at least you can kind of let them know which themes you would be happy to work for. And from there, depending on which designers they're looking for, which themes they might hire you or they may not hire you. So yeah. Question, use your favorite Lego designer, Mike Psyche. If you check his brick list on Brickset, you'll see a lot of amazing Lego sets in that list. So you'll probably understand why he's my favorite Lego designer. Do you build alternative brick kits? If so, do you have a favorite alternate brick company or a favorite kit? What do you think? How long did it take you to transform your little YouTube project into a full-time job slash business? So from the time I shared my first video, it was September 12th, I think of 2019, I quit my job at Lego. That was the first video until the time I got monetized on YouTube. Uh, it took like seven or eight months. I remember being monetized around April or May of 2020. And as soon as I started getting ad revenue from YouTube, it was more than enough to become a full-time YouTuber. You have to remember that the cost of living in Portugal isn't that high. My wife also had a, a, a very good paying job. So we were okay for a while. Uh, meanwhile, the, the business has grown. I now have a lot more responsibilities. I have rent to pay, you know, electricity, internet. I have a video editor who needs a salary. I, I have an accountant. I have to pay my own salary. I need to buy like video gear, sometimes Lego sets as well. So the, the expenses have risen, but fortunately the, the revenue that I'm getting out of all of this, uh, out of everything that I do is more than enough to, to keep things going. So. That's, that's cool, but yeah, seven to eight months. You designed 31065 Park Street Townhouse. I love that set, very underrated. I did not. I did, however, design the B and C models for, no. The B model, Cafe Corner, as I like to call it. So I only did an alternate model of that particular set. The designer was Morton. Hey Tiago, why don't you merge both channels? Amazing content, by the way. So the way I think YouTube works is that people will want to subscribe to channels with a specific type of content. So people can like my Lego set reviews, people can like my piece highlight videos or the educational type of videos. People might like the Tiago Tuesday Talks or the Charts channel, but these are all different types of content and it would be a big mess in my eyes to have all of these different types of content within the same channel because it would hurt views in the long run, you know, because if people only came to the main channel just for the reviews and then they get suggested all of these different types of videos that they didn't really sign up for, that could actually hurt uh, the following videos of the channel. So I think it's better to keep the channel separate with different types of content. And even then with the main channel, like the educational type videos and the reviews, I'm seriously considering like splitting the two because yeah, in the long run, it would make a lot more sense to do that than keeping different kinds of Lego content or keeping different types of content within the same channel. At least that's what I feel. Did we already get all the sets you designed? There was a video way back where you said you had designed more sets, but they have not been released since your absence at LEGO. Yes, you got all of my sets. The first set I mentioned was the gingerbread house that at the time hadn't been announced. And there were also three more sets. There was like these bricks and animals uh, classic box. And there were also two smaller creator three-in-one models. One was like a monster truck set and another was a propeller plane. By now, all of them have been released. So yeah, no more uh, Lego sets coming out from me. Maybe. You mentioned your portfolio of mocks you've shown during recruitment to Lego company. Is there a place we can find those? Do you keep creating mocks? So I've never published my portfolio, but most of the builds that I highlighted in my portfolio to Lego 
should be on my Flickr account. And there's a link in the description there as well. So if you check most of the mocks that are in that account prior to 2016, at least the better ones, I probably place them on my portfolio. Mocks, I don't make them as much, but every now and then I try to include, a f you know, a few tips and tricks on my educational type videos. So I did make like uh, some tutorials like for the bathtubs in my recent bracket video. So yeah, little things, not as big as before, but who knows. How much do Lego designers get paid yearly? Millions. Do you like technique? How well is your pay? Also millions. <laughs> I wish. So that's it for today's episode, guys. If you want to ask me any questions, do drop them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer some of them in the next episode of Tiago Tuesday Talks. This only took a week to come out, so maybe the next one will follow. Or maybe another year. Who knows?